Good day, grade 10s. Welcome to this final lesson in week 36 where we are preparing for paper 1 by going through some long questions. We've done some short questions in the previous papers, I mean, for your previous lessons. Right, so it says, in this circuit diagram below, three identical bulbs. So yes, bulb 1, bulb 2, bulb 3. Three identical bulbs. Um, are connected as shown. The ammeter connecting wires and battery have negligible resistance. Say the diagram and then answer the questions that follow. Assume that the both switches are open. Okay, so we've got a 12 volt battery, an ammeter, we've got switch 1 and switch 2, and M and N are parallel, and P is 6 ohms. Okay, now do you agree that if that's 6 ohms, this must also be 6 ohms because they said they're identical, and this must also be 6 ohms. Okay, now it says, choose the answers from the options in the brackets. Connecting more bulbs in parallel causes the resistance of the circuit to increase, decrease, or remain the same. Well, the correct answer is that the more bulbs we have in parallel, the less resistance we have. Why? Because we've got more options, so therefore it's going to decrease. So the more bulbs we have in parallel, the smaller the resistance. The potential difference across the battery, um, connecting more bulbs in parallel, sorry, causes the potential difference across the battery to increase, decrease, or remain the same. In this case, it will remain the same because there's no internal resistance. So in this case, we can say it will remain the same. Right, now it says the following question to refer to the circuit. Calculate the effective resistance of the circuit. Okay, so here comes into play the bit where we see that these three are the same. We need to work out the effective resistance. So do you agree we need to work out the parallel resistance first and then add it to the series resistance? So R parallel equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, which in this case is 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6, 1 over 6, I don't know what's wrong with me today. The common denominator is 6, so it becomes 2 over 6, which is then um, 1 over 3, I'm just making it simpler, but that's equal to 1 over R parallel. Therefore, R parallel is equal to 3 ohms, okay, but they want the effective resistance of the circuit, which means they want the total resistance, so that means we have to add it to the series bit. So R total is 3 plus our 6 ohms, that's in series, so therefore it's 9 ohms, and there we go, we've got that. Now they want to know the reading on the ammeter. Okay, well that's pretty easy because we know Ohm's law says V equals IR, okay? And the current that is going through here is going through this bit here, which is the main part of the circuit, okay? We know the volts is 12, and we know the total resistance of the circuit is 9, so therefore we can say I is just 12 divided by 9, which if we divide that by 3 becomes 4 over 3 equals I, which becomes I is equal to 1,33 amps. So the reading on the ammeter is 1,33 amps. Now it says the charge that passes through P, this dude here, P, in 2 minutes. They want the Q that passes through P in 2 minutes. So before we do anything else, I'm going to convert this minutes to seconds. So to do that, we time is by 60, so that's 120 seconds. Why? Because grade 10, so that is the SI unit for time, is seconds, and we're going to be using seconds. Now they want the charge. So now we need to go look at our formula sheet. And our formula sheet has the equation V equals W over Q. That's not going to help us. It also has the formula sheet the Q equals IT, or as I like to say, quit. Helps us remember, Q is equal to IT. Do we have the current that is going through P? Yes, we do, because the current that's going through this ammeter here is the current that's going through P. So this 1,33 amps is that 1,33 amps going through there. We have the time, they've asked, told us that it's 120 seconds and they want the charge. So therefore Q is equal to IT, we can do it, might as well just do it here. The current is 1,33 times 
times by the time, which is 120 seconds. So let's use our calculator. So we've got 1 comma 3 3 times 120 and that gives us 159 comma 6, 159 comma 6. So that's 159 comma 6, grade 10s am I finished? No I'm not because I haven't put my unit in and my unit for charge is coulombs. So therefore the charge that passes through P, through P in 2 minutes is 159 comma 6 coulombs. Finally they want to know the potential difference across each of the bulbs. Okay, so let us just change color. They're saying let's pretend there's a voltmeter here, V1, a voltmeter here, V2, and a voltmeter here, V3. And they want to know what is the potential difference across each of the bulbs. Let us start with the easiest one. Let's start with P because that's the part that's in series in the circuit. So the voltmeter across P, I'm going to call VP, okay? Remember that VP is equal to IR, that's Ohm's law. We know the current that's going through P. It is 1, 33 amps. And we know the resistance. The resistance is 6 ohms. They've told us that, okay, 6 ohms. So therefore, we can pop that in our calculator. So we've got 1, comma, 1, comma 3, 3 times by 6, which is equal to 7, comma 9, 8 volts. 7, comma 9, oh, I really can't write today. 7, comma 9, 8 volts. Okay, now, that is the voltage going through here, 7, comma 9, 8 volts. Now they want to know what is the voltmeter reading on V2 and V1. But what's important is that these are parallel, right? So therefore they are going to have the same potential difference. They're going to have the same voltmeter reading. So I'm going to call this Vm and this Vn just to make it easy. So we know that Vm equals Vn, okay? That's the one thing. The other thing is we know that the total amount of voltage that is supplied to the circuit is 12 volts. So the total voltage, the total voltage supplied to the circuit is 12 volts. So, but 7.98 volts is used to get through P, right? So we're going to minus the 7,98 and that is going to be Vm which also equals Vn and I'll explain why in a second again. So we're going to go 12 minus 7 comma 98 and that is 4 comma 0 2. So that is 4 comma 0 2 volts. So that there is 4 comma 0 2 and that there is also 4 comma 0 2 volts. And I want you to think of it this way. If you're a little electron and you're going along, you go la 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 all the way along here. You need to use your energy either to get through this resistor or to get through this resistor. You're not going through both. So you've got a total of 12 volts as your energy supply, right? You're going to use up 7,98 volts to get through P. So whatever's left is the amount of volts you've got left to get through N in this case. So whether it go through N or M, because they're in parallel, they're the same, and that's how many volts are left over, which is 4,02. Right, if you're struggling with this, please go back to the electricity section and go study that, watch it carefully, and then two identical metal spheres, A and B, rest on an insulated surface and carry charges of minus 2 times by 0.8 times 10 to the minus 9 and plus 4.5 times 10 to the minus 9. Okay, the spheres are brought into contact with each other. It is observed that the spheres move apart. Briefly explain this observation. Okay, so initially, object A, sphere A, has a charge of minus 2.8 times 10 to the minus 9 and initially B has a charge of 4.5 times 10 to the plus 4.5 times 10 to the minus 9. What happens when they come into contact is that the excess electrons that are on A are going to travel to the positively charged B to try and make them be the same. It's basically going to try and neutralize them totally. So the excess electrons are going to travel through to B and what happens is they end up with the same 
charge and because they have the same charge they will therefore repel because why because they have the same charge because excess electrons are traveling from A to B okay now it says calculate the new charge on each sphere after they've moved apart well this is really easy we just have to find the average the average from them so the new charge we're going to call it Q new is equal to the charge on the first one which is minus 2 comma 8 times by 10 to the minus 9 plus 4 comma 5 times 10 to the minus 9 all over 2 okay so let's pop that in our calculators so we've got minus 2.8 exponent negative 9 plus 4.5 exponent negative 9 all over 2 equals and it's 8.5 times 10 to the minus 10 8 comma 5 times by 10 to the negative 10 coulombs but please note now what happened this dude here a had a negative charge of 2.8 times 10 to the minus 9 and this dude had a very positive 4.5 times 10 to the minus 9 compared to that one a lot of electrons, excess electrons, traveled through T here till they both had the same charge of positive 8.5 times 10 to the minus 10 and that's why they repelled. Now it says calculate the number of electrons transferred from one sphere to the other during contact. So let's think about it. A started with, he started with minus 2 comma 8 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs. He then ended, he ended, let's write it this way, ended at 8 comma 5 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs. So what happened was all these electrons were lost. They were not lost, they were transferred to B. Okay, so, um, sorry that's minus 10, minus 10. Or you can think of it another way. We can say, well, B started at 4 comma 5 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs and ended at 8 comma 5 times 10 to the negative 10 coulombs. So if we find the difference in that charge, we'll find out how many coulombs of electrons have been transferred. So let's get out our calculator and we can say 4.5 exponent negative 9 minus 8.5 exponent negative 10 and that gives us 3.65 times 10 to the minus 9 3 comma 65 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs that's how much charge was transferred okay this at minus 3.65 this at plus 3.65 but the point is that that's a match but they didn't ask for the charge they wanted the number of electrons but we know the charge on one electron is 1 comma 6 times 10 to the negative 19 okay therefore the number of electrons is going to be what what can we do we can take this total charge of 3 comma 6 5 times by 10 to the negative 9 and we can divide it by 1 comma 6 times by 10 to the negative 19 and we'll equal with the number of electrons that have transferred so let's do that. So we've got 3 comma 6 5 exponent negative 9 divided by 1 comma 6 exponent negative 19 equals and we've got 2.28125 times by 10 to the 10 or remember we ran to two decimal places 2 comma 2 8 times by 10 to the 10. So it's 2 comma 2 8 times by 10 to the 10 and that is the number of electrons that were transferred from A to B. Right, grade tens. Again, like I said, this is supposed to be a revision for your preparation for your final exam. So if you didn't understand what was going on here, please go back to sections on, on this section is specifically is electrostatics. The previous one is electric circuits and make sure you understand. Have a great day.